Ever sit through one of those training things uh, where you're just like dying to raise your hand and be like, when am I ever going to use this? Oh, tell me about it. Like they just wheeled in a fire hose of information, crossed their fingers and hoped something stuck. Yeah. Yeah. No kidding. But luckily for us, uh, that's not what we're doing today. Thank goodness. Our deep dive today is all about fixing that very problem. How to make training actually stick. Right. We're tackling lesson mapping with the godfather of instructional design himself, Guy Wallace. The Guy Wallace. Yeah, have you heard of him? Uh, oh yeah, big fan. So he's written a ton on this stuff. He's written a whole stack of books on this stuff. And you know what's so fascinating to me about his work? What's that? It's how laser focused he is on making training actually translate to real world performance. Okay. Like we're not just talking theory here. Right. We're talking about giving people the tools to actually do do their jobs better. Okay, now you're speaking my language. Right. Because what's the point if it's not actually applicable? So his system is called MCD. Yeah, MCD. Modular Curriculum Development, right. You got it. Tell me a little bit more about what that even means. So it's all about aligning training with what Wallace calls high stakes performance. High stakes performance. Yeah, you can think about it like this. What are the absolutely critical tasks in an organization? Yeah. The ones where messing up has huge consequences. Uh -huh. Those are the areas where effective training can be the difference between sinking or swimming for an organization. So we're talking about prioritizing the training that really impacts the bottom line. 100%. No more death by PowerPoint on topics nobody even uses. Exa you said it, not me. I'm so glad you agree. And that's where lesson mapping comes in. It's the heart of Wallace's MCD methodology. Okay. It's like the blueprint for building those high impact training programs we were just talking about. And how does that actually work? I mean, does he have some like secret sauce for making training stick? Well, he breaks instructional design down into three levels. It starts big picture with what are called event maps, mm -hmm. which outline the overall learning journey someone's going to go on. Okay. Then we zoom in. Okay. We get a little bit more granular. Okay. With lesson maps, which get into specific knowledge and skills. Oh, gotcha. And finally, it's down to the nitty gritty with what are called instructional activity specifications. Oh, boy. Which are like your step-by-step -step instructions for each learning activity. So it's like those Russian nesting dolls. Yes. But for training programs... I love that. I'm getting hungry thinking about it. Right. So walk me through this lesson map thing. Okay. What does that actually look like in practice? Wallace is all about practical application. Okay, good, because so are we. He actually walks you through a scenario in the book where you're creating a lesson map on the fly, right in the middle of a meeting. Wait, hold up, in a meeting? Yeah. Like yeah. while people are watching? Yeah. That's kind of intense. He's all about being agile and responsive to real-time needs. But the key takeaway is that he emphasizes applying these concepts immediately. I like that. Not just talking about them in theory. Okay, that's something I can definitely get behind. Right. So if I'm trying to create one of these lesson maps, what's my first step? Okay. Do I just start listing out everything someone needs to know about a topic? Not quite. Okay. Wallace is a big believer in understanding the why behind the what. Okay. He says it's not enough to just know something. You have to be able to apply that knowledge effectively in real world situations. Okay. He calls this performance competence. So it's like the difference between knowing the rules of basketball <laughs> and actually being able to sink the three pointer when it really counts. Exactly. Okay. So before you even think about designing the training, you need to figure out what those three pointers are. Okay. The critical performance outcomes you're aiming for. Got it. What does success actually look like in this specific role or task? Yeah. Okay. Then you can start analyzing any performance gaps that need to be addressed. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. You can't solve a problem if you don't know what it is in the first place. Exactly. So how do you go about actually figuring out those performance gaps? Where do you even begin? All right. So we figured out where the performance gaps are. Okay. Those air balls we need to address. Right. What's next? Okay. How do we actually like bridge that gap with training? So Wallace has this really systematic approach okay. that he breaks down into 17 categories oh boy. of what he calls enabling knowledge and skills. Okay. And this part really blew my mind when I first read it. Okay. He's basically created this master checklist okay. for analyzing what someone needs to know. Okay. And be able to do O to be successful in a given role. Hold on. 17 mm -hmm. categories. F-17. I'm already overwhelmed. I know. It sounds like a lot. Yeah. 
but it's not as daunting as it sounds because right. these categories cover everything from like yeah. industry standards right. and company policies to those softer skills. Yeah, like communication and problem solving. Gotcha. And the idea is you wouldn't necessarily use all 17 okay. for every single training program that you design. Right. Yeah. You're going to pick and choose the ones that are most relevant. Okay to the specific performance you're trying to improve. Okay, that makes me feel a little bit better. Yeah. So it's like creating a custom tailored suit. Exactly. But for it's, knowledge it's, and skills. I love that analogy. Right. Spot on. So once you have a clear picture of those enabling knowledge and skills, right. you can start like actually building the training program. Yeah, that's where the lesson mapping comes in. Okay, so take me to lesson map school. Okay. What are the building blocks here? So Wallace is a big proponent of this really interesting approach. Okay. It's called backward chaining. Backward chaining. Okay. And essentially what this means is you start okay. by designing the application exercises. Okay. Which he calls APPOs. APPOs. Got it. And these are all about giving people a chance to actually practice applying what they've learned yeah. in a realistic setting. So no more passively watching someone talk at you for an hour. <laughs> no, no, no. This is about rolling up your sleeves and getting your hands dirty. I love that you said that right. because that's exactly what it is. Yeah. Think simulations, well, okay. case studies, Okay. even using real work assignments. Oh, wow. Whenever possible. I like it. And the cool thing is Wallace is a big proponent of providing feedback Okay. During these APPOs. Okay. Not just waiting until the end. Right. To see if people got it. Right. He actually gives you specific strategies for giving feedback. Okay. That actually helps people improve their understanding. Okay. And build confidence as they go. That makes a lot of sense because it's like having a coach right there with you. Exactly. Guiding you as you practice those three pointers. Yes, exactly. And speaking of coaches. Okay. That's where what are called demos come in. Demos. Demonstrations. These are all about showing people what good performance looks like. So it's one thing to tell me how to shoot a basketball. Right. But it's a whole other thing to see Steph Curry drain a three-pointer right in front of me. 100%. And by providing these concrete examples, yeah. you're helping people bridge the gap yeah. between understanding the concept and actually being able to do it themselves. Oh, okay. I like it. Right. So we've got APOs for practice. Yes. Demos for inspiration. Yeah. What else goes into this lesson map masterpiece? The final piece of the puzzle okay. is what are called NFOs. NFOs, okay. And this is the information that people that. need uh -huh. to make sense of the demos mm -hmm. and prepare for those application exercises. So it's not just throwing information at people and hoping it sticks. Oh, yeah. You're strategically feeding them the information they need. Yes. Right when they need it most. Exactly. And remember that backward chaining approach we talked about. Yeah. You actually start by designing the APPOs, then you design the demos. Okay. And then finally, you design the INFOs. Wait, so you're saying I should start at the end yes. and work my way backward? Essentially, yes. That seems counterintuitive. It does. But I kind of love it. It's one of those things, once it clicks, it's yeah. like, oh my goodness. Yeah. This is brilliant. Okay, so by focusing on those application exercises first. Right. You ensure that every piece of information yes. and every demonstration yep. is laser focused on helping people master those skills exactly. that they actually need to succeed. Yes. And I think that's a really important point. Okay. This is clicking for me now. Okay. I've got my APPOs, yes. my DEMOs, yep. my NFOs. You got it. I'm basically a lesson mapping maestro at this point. You're well on your way. What happens next? <laughs> Well, Wallace breaks the entire design process okay. down into 10 specific steps. Okay. And we've really just scratched the surface here. Well, there are more steps. There are a few more. Don't leave me hanging. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll get there. Okay. But I think for now, the key takeaway is that Wallace provides a really clear roadmap okay. for creating training that is both engaging yeah. and effective. Okay. He doesn't just tell you what to do. Right. He shows you exactly how to do it. Okay. Step by step. Okay, my brain is doing the wave right now. I love it. Backward chaining, APPOs, demos. This is good stuff. It's a lot. It is? But it's good stuff. But it's good stuff. Yeah. Okay, so you mentioned there are 10 whole steps in Wallace's design process. Right. What happens after we've got our lesson map masterpiece all laid out? What's next? So the next few steps are all about taking that blueprint that we've created. Okay. And turning it into a real live training program. Okay. We're talking about fleshing out those APPOs, right. I... demos, and NFOs with all the details. Okay. Like creating actual materials, right. activities, 
even scripts if you're doing any kind of video or online components. Mm -hmm. So it's like going from that rough sketch on a napkin to a full-blown architectural plan. Yes, exactly. And just like an architect wouldn't just hand the plans off to the construction crew right. without double-checking everything. Of course not. Wallace is a big believer in testing and refining your training before you unleash it on the world. Makes sense. You don't want the training equivalent of a leaky roof because you skipped a step. Exactly. So how do you actually go about testing training? Wallace is all about getting feedback from the people who matter most. Okay. And those are the learners themselves. Of course. And the subject matter experts. Okay. He actually suggests bringing them together for these structured review sessions. Okay. Where they can poke holes in the training. Okay. Offer suggestions and really make sure that it's going to hit the mark. I love that he emphasizes getting everyone at the table. Yes. It's like those old cooking shows where they'd make someone from the audience come up and taste the dish. Yes. You want to know if it's actually good, right? Exactly. You want to get that feedback. Yeah. And this whole process of testing and refining. Yeah. It's ongoing. Okay. It's not like you test it once and you're done. Right. Wallace is all about continuous improvement. Right. Always looking for ways to make the training even better. Okay. So it's constantly evolving. Yes, exactly. That's music to my ears because it's like that saying, Rome wasn't built in a day. Right. <laughs> and neither is a killer training program. And neither is a killer training program. And, you know, one more challenge that Wallace tackles that I found really fascinating. Okay. Is he calls it the problem of non-conscious knowledge. Non-conscious knowledge. Okay. That sounds kind of mystical. It does sound a little woo-woo, doesn't it? Yeah. Are we training Jedi mind readers now? Not quite, but it's almost as tricky. Okay. So he's talking about how really experienced people. Okay often struggle to actually explain how they do what they do. Okay. Because they've been doing it for so long, it's become second nature. Right. But that makes it really hard to actually train someone else to do it. Yeah. Because they can't articulate those hidden steps. Right. And thought processes. I've totally been there. Right. It's like trying to explain how to ride a bike. Exactly. You just kind of DO it. You don't think about it. Right. And so Wallace offers some really interesting techniques okay. for uncovering that hidden knowledge. Okay. And one that he talks about is called cognitive task analysis. Okay. Which sounds very complicated. It does. But it's basically about breaking down those complex tasks. Okay. And figuring out what are the underlying thought processes. Okay. And decision points. So you're almost like reverse engineering someone's expertise. Yes, exactly. Okay, sign me up. I need to add that to my toolkit. <laughs> it's really insightful stuff. And then finally, Wallace wraps up okay. by talking about the importance of getting buy-in okay. from all the stakeholders involved. Of course. And he suggests forming what he calls a project steering team, kind of like a brain trust for your training program. So it's not just about the instructional designer going off into a silo and creating something in a vacuum. Exactly. It needs to be a collaborative process. Okay. And he even recommends these formal gate review meetings okay where the team can check in okay make sure everyone's on the same page okay and head off any potential problems before they become major roadblocks i'm getting strong teamwork makes the dream work vibes here yes exactly and that brings us to one of my favorite quotes from the book okay that's here wallace says and i quote just because an instructional systems designer can uncover a valid need for instruction does not, in and of itself, warrant meeting that need. Wow, that's powerful. Right. So even if you've identified a knowledge gap, right? training might not be the right solution. Training is not always the answer. Wow. Sometimes there's a better solution. Okay. Right. So it's about being really strategic and intentional. Exactly. Not just jumping into training because it's the easy answer. 100%. And I think that's what makes Wallace's approach so valuable. Okay. He gives you this framework for creating training that is not only effective, yeah. But also truly makes a difference in the real world. This has been such an eye-opening deep dive. It's really it's stuff. I feel like I've got a whole new arsenal of tools and strategies for creating training that actually works. That's what we like to hear. Yes. And to all of our listeners out there, thank you so much for joining us on this incredible journey. Yes, thank you. Into the world of lesson mapping. Absolutely. And until next time, keep learning. Keep learning. And keep diving deep. Dive deep, my friends. Yeah. Yeah.